Hello, my dear students. I'm Ifrit, and today I'm going to discuss with you about history of microbiology. You know, last classes we uh, read about uh, what is microbiology, why we study microbiology. With that, we also read about classification of Aristotle, classification of uh, Carolus Linnaeus, with different living organism and microbial world classification. With that, we also learn uh, learned about different characteristics of the microorganism. Today we will observe microbiology with some experiment of history. Okay, so first of all, how the cell was invented? The cell was invented actually by Robert Hooke in uh, 1665. He actually observed uh, some coats of bottle and he showed that uh, there uh, there were some little boxes there and he named it as cell. But in this way, cell was invented. After uh, Robert Hooke, uh, another renowned scientist who known as Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, actually he was first person who invented microscope and uh, discovered microbial world. Okay, and uh, Leeuwenhoek microscopes actually magnify the objects more than fifty to three hundred times than normal its size, and he actually prepared that microscope with double convex glass lenses which he held between two silver plates and this is actually his invented microscope okay and uh, with his invented microscope he observed a variety of things what you know, what was that thing that is rain water pond water blood even some dirt which is known as scrapping of his own teeth and whenever he just magnifying that the uh, uh, different kinds of materials or different kinds of things he saw that some little animal cubes which he named actually there were some moving objects which just moving it around and he was so much surprised that he just sketches uh, that animal cubes and communicate with uh, his finding with uh, the Royal Society of London, who uh, at that time it's a, uh, it was a famous active organization, uh, who just published different kinds, uh, which is published different kinds of articles, okay, renowned articles. So he just uh, contacted with Royal Society of London and he just published his first article in Philosophical Transaction, which was Royal Society's journal. And after his publication, actually, the microbiological uh, things and micro with the different kinds of experiments that are related with microbes, actually, it's go faster. Okay. And at that time, he just gave one theory or discovered one theory that is called abiogenesis or spontaneous generation. It means that any kind of non living things can be uh, can be produced or can born from non-living material okay so it's called actually uh, uh, spontaneous generation or abiogenesis and it's like that every living materials can born from any non-living materials but uh, after his theory, he, uh, he given uh, after giving this theory, different scientists, physicians, doctors worked on it for proving uh, this theory and non-proving or disproved of this theory. So one of them was Francisco Reddy. He actually believed he was a physician and he actually believed that it's not possible to born any kinds of living materials from any non-living material. So he just uh, showed an experiment. His uh, experiment was there was three jar. jar. One is uh, all of the jar contained the meat broth and one jar uh, head was open. One was just covered with a core and one was covered with a net. Okay. And after some days, uh, he just checked that the two jar that is covered with core and covered with mat, there is no growth of any kinds of larva or flies. Okay, and it is called maggots actually. There is no uh, this growth of that. But another thing, or uh, another jar that was uh, actually open headed, there are different kinds of larva just uh, there he watched. 
so from that three he wanted to say that actually this larva just came from with the help of these flies but he uh, couldn't prove that okay he was not so much a strong proof on it that these flies actually carry that larva okay or carry that microorganism so uh, he just uh, gave that experiment and others actually worked on his experiment again for disproving his theory that actually living materials cannot go from living materials so another scientist who was uh, john needham who actually strong supporter of the spontaneous generation theory that means uh, any living materials can grow from non living materials and for that reason he proposed that uh, any kind of animal cules or tiny organism can grow from in the mutton gravy automatically from the jar or from the mutton gravy that was uh, that was grow actually and for that reason he covered the flux with pork as done by ready and that means he covered these flux also with the pork so three flux actually covered with the cork on neck and after some days he showed that automatically here the larvae uh, born so he strongly said that any kinds of living organism can be grow from non living material that means that grow from that jar or that broth so after his experiment another scientist who was uh, known as a priest actually that is uh, uh, his name was lazarus plezeni he actually again work on ready's work or ready's experiment and for the prison he boiled the pea broth for an hour and sealed the flux for long time and he then observed that there is no appearance of microorganism so he first disproved the theory of spontaneous generation and proposed the theory of biogenesis okay that means it is called the theory of spontaneous generation is also called theory of abiogenesis he disproved that and proposed the theory of biogenesis and he said that every form of life take its origin from their parent germ cell or cells that's why without parent cell it's not possible to grow any kinds of microorganisms but he cannot uh, give any uh, experiment on it he just give the theory okay so we just get theory from him not any experiment so there were some confusion on it that is it possible or not after uh, lazaro uh, we passed through a uh, proof that theory and he uh, proved the theory of biogenesis and this proved the theory of spontaneous generation and after his experiment actually the theory of a biogenesis or spontaneous generation actually totally cancelled and it's now established the theory of biogenesis and he also called father of microbiology right because it's lots of uh, contribution to the microbial world so uh, the experiment was like that he uh, taken that one plug and he poured some non sterile liquid there that is the non sterile liquid and after that uh, he added another sewn neck with that plus and he just sterile that plus okay that is the sterilization of that plus after that uh, sterilization of that plus he just sterile the liquid within the plus and he just keep that plus like that after cooling that after long time he just observed there is no growth of microorganism here that is after a long time and his cork was open ended so lots of dust actually are just keep there or deposited there okay and after some days suddenly the plus actually tipped or you can also say it moved and due to moving the dust that is deposited from long time it just go within the sterile liquid and after within short time he observed that the whole liquid actually spoiled and microorganism grew and from this uh, he just strongly said that the uh, theory of biogenesis actually is the right for growing of any microorganism its parent cell is very much important without parent cell it's not possible to grow any microorganism okay 
So that was actually Pasteur's experiment on swan of flux, which proved the theory of biogenesis. With that, it is actually explanation, nothing else that I um, to say. And with that, he also uh, gives, he also give different kinds of experiment, different kinds of theory. With that, most common is fermentation, that pasteurization is given by uh, him. And he also founded another theory that is called germ theory is disease. And this theory, he just given or proposed that theory, but he cannot give uh, any, he couldn't give any kind of experiment on it. Okay. So this theory actually like that for growing any kinds of disease, any fixed microorganism needed. Without the uh, any one microorganism, disease cannot uh, uh, actually born in our body. That means any one kinds of microorganism can produce disease in different kinds of animals or different kinds of human beings. But as there, there was uh, no experiment or there is a proved experiment on it, he just known as only the founder of the theories, uh, in this uh, theory actually or the germ theory of disease. And from this germ theory of disease, then two scientists actually worked on it. And these two scientists was one was Robert Koch and another was his teacher, that is Henley. Okay, so both of the scientists actually proved that germ theory of disease and how they prove it. Actually, they taken a, a dead lamb which, which died due to some specific reason or due to some specific microorganism. Yeah, they just uh, took some blood from that dead lamb or diseased lamb and he cultured that and prepared a cultural media of uh, that microorganism. And then he taken this microorganism and pushed into a healthy rat. And after some days, they observed that the rat is died. And they again take the blood from that uh, red, uh, red the died rat and they again prepared the culture. And then they just compare between two cultures and they observe that the both of the culture are same. And from that, he they just uh, prove that any microorganism can create disease in different kinds of animals. Okay, and the microorganism was and has better. So uh, we we learn about some experiment and we also learn about some scientists. With that, he also called the father of uh, the Robert Koch, uh, known as father of bacteriology or practical bacteriology, as uh, he actually uh, invented bacterial films, glass slide, different kinds of uh, needles, and he also discovered the uh, tubercle bacillus or this microorganism. So he uh, he also had lots of uh, lots of contribution to the microbiology. So he is known as father of bacterial uh, practical uh, fathers of uh, practical bacteriology actually. So with there these are the actually some activities of scientists that are very much famous in uh, microbiology. With this experiment, these are some scientists who also has different kinds of contribution to the <clears throat> microbial world. As Alexander Fleming, he was very popular and he discovered the penicillium from the penicillium notitum. Like that, uh, these uh, so, uh, these experiments and these scientists' name and all of the disease and microbes name is for all of your learning. So uh, just note down your problems, which we will discuss in our tomorrow's class. Thank you for today. Allah peace.